industrial light and magic has created some of the most iconic imagery that cinema has ever seen. For the past 35 years, they have transported us to worlds beyond the reaches of our imagination. Their pioneering and breathtaking visual effects have transformed the way we see movies. We're all jaded when we go to movies. I mean, we watch all kinds of stuff that we aren't supposed to be looking for. We're looking for the seams, we're looking for the cracks. But, you know, when they make you forget all that and pull you into the magic that is the story, then they've succeeded. Through their masterful blend of art and technology, they have revolutionized movie making and helped to define popular culture. From the sublime to the ridiculous, from E.T. to the amazing work they did on Transformers. ILM loves to find different ways of telling stories visually. They've made us wonder, they've made us marvel, they've made us believe. It's wonderful to know that the tools are there to really begin to get what's in here, you know, out there into the, into the world. And ILM has been leading the charge in that quest since it began. The digital era that dominates modern-day visual effects was ushered in by ILM. Hundreds of artists work collectively to create complex imagery from a variety of elements that combine to perform a masterful illusion. Action! Through their technology, ILM has given filmmakers the means to achieve anything. Photorealistic characters and environments can be created from scratch, such as an Iron Man 2 and Avatar. But these high-tech advancements have not come easy nor have they come overnight. The roots of today's cinema magic goes back over a hundred years. But the revolution of modern visual effects began with a story in a galaxy far, far away. Industrial Light and Magic was formed in 1975 to realize the complicated special effects challenges for a new film called Star Wars, a space adventure dreamed up by a young filmmaker, George Lucas. His vision was unlike anything Hollywood had heard before. With Star Wars, I want to do an action picture. I want to do something where I can pan with the spaceships. I want to do it where there are really short cuts. Where there's a lot of rhythm, a lot of pace, a lot of movement on the screen. I want it to be very, very cinematic. And at that point in time, that was impossible. You just could not do that with special effects. So when the studio said, well, how are you going to do this? I said, don't worry, we'll figure it out. You know, I, I got to, you know, but I had no idea what I was going to do. At the time, the special effects departments at the major studios were all but gone. So George Lucas was able to buy up old equipment for pennies on the dollar and set up ILM in a Van Nuys, California warehouse. With 20th Century Fox on board, George Lucas and producer Gary Kurtz enlisted photographic effects expert John Dykstra to lead the effort. Dykstra brought together a ragtag group of college students, artists, and engineers whose mixed skills in photography, model making, and mechanics would set the stage for the fantastical space saga. Creating ILM to do the work for Star Wars was like gambling high odds bets. We knew we were taking a huge number of risks. We were incredibly naive to think that we were going to be successful in doing that, and we were incredibly fortunate that George and even Fox in its own way were willing to back us. When I read the script, I was just saying, my God, what is this movie? All these different genres are kind of together in this massive space film. And you're reading like the last 30 or 40 pages and every page is full of another effect shot of the battle. Every page and it's like, this thing will never get done. When I first read the script for Star Wars, I think I came across a few lines that were worrisome. The description, unlike anything you've ever seen before, to most studio executives and to producers and even to directors, was daunting. We had 365 shots to do for this movie, which had never really been done for an effects movie. It was really fun, because we all knew that we could do it, because we had this nexus of talent that was just outrageous. To create a believable universe in the pre-digital age, known as the photochemical era, ILM had to advance the use of traditional handcrafted effects techniques, such as animation and rubber mask creature work. 
Artists would use matte paintings to increase the scope and production value of a scene by extending environments painted on glass that would be photographed and combined with live action elements. Detailed miniatures and models were built and shot against blue screen to allow the placement of other elements into the scene. In a process called optical compositing, ILM retooled a dormant optical printer that allowed for a record number of separate film strips to be rephotographed and combined onto a single layer of film. I knew what I was up against, and I knew how I wanted to do it, but I was constantly bumping up against the technology ceiling. Sometimes you'd have as many as 100 different elements going through, and it'd take 24 hours to do it, and if you made one mistake with one element, you had to start over again. There's no second chance. If anything goes wrong during something, it's over, and you have to sort of stop and start the entire process over again, and that is really difficult. And that takes a good team and a lot of concentration to get a high-speed model to blow up quick enough in the right way, or stop-motion characters to walk across the scene over a period of a 12-hour shoot, and it's only gonna last four seconds. There can't be anything go wrong. No light bulbs can blow out. No, nothing can be bumped accidentally you know, between each frame of film. So it's really hard to do that. It had to look real. And so that was the trick. We would paint ourselves into a corner and have to invent our way out of it. We all knew we could depend on each other. There was this kind of spirit of camaraderie, and so many of us gave our best ideas to the show. John Dykstra designed the revolutionary Dykstraflex. This computer-controlled system allowed for the programming of dynamic and repeatable camera moves. The Dykstraflex facilitated the combining of numerous elements into a single dynamic shot, freeing up the stationary camera that had been the norm in model photography for over 100 years. It was like we were in Florence during the Renaissance. There were so few places that did that type of visual effects, and there were so few artists that could do it. It was very rare, very wonderful, and it was a, a rebirth of the, the, the industry. Star Wars was the beginning of the renaissance of visual effects. And Star Wars woke up a sleeping giant. George anthropologically looked out at the world and said, what's missing here? The first day that I saw Star Wars, I was one of those people, along with my wife Cheryl, that saw it and immediately went back and got into the two hour line again to see it right away. And we saw it twice on the first day and it was just this transformative, mind blowing cinematic experience. And I called George and he said, well, unfortunately we only got maybe 30, 40% of what I really wanted there. <laughs> I'll never forget seeing Star Wars for the first time. I was in film school and it was like, was there an opening weekend? The Chinese theater standing in line for six hours and and the way that that film entertained the audience was unlike any film in history. To the world famous Chinese theater come the stars of the biggest box office success in motion picture history. I think the success of Star Wars opened the doors for a whole series of genres of film that hadn't been done before because people simply couldn't figure out how to make the images. ILM was born out of sort of a rebirth of the beginning of cinema, which is to say, it's, it's all a trick. And we're in the business of, we're the tricksters. The historic success of Star Wars allowed George Lucas to establish a filmmaking center outside of Hollywood. He relocated to Marin County, Northern California, and eventually built Skywalker Ranch. ILM would set up shop in the nearby town of San Rafael, inhabiting a nondescript building known as Kerner Optical, their home until 2005. They immediately began work on the next Star Wars film, The Empire Strikes Back. All in all, the real impetus of ILM was to keep a core group of creative people and the highly technological environment they needed functioning. It was really clear that in order for ILM to sustain, we did have to find a model that would work for becoming a viable business and working for multiple filmmakers.